Fireworks and dyes in Minecraft are really important decorational parts of the game, so in this video I'll show you everything about both of them. Dyes inside of Minecraft are used to color a lot of different items. So for instance, you can dye wool. You can also dye concrete any single color you want while you're making it, although you cannot re-dye it. Another thing you can dye is the newish candle item. Leather armor and leather horse armor can also both be dyed. Firework stars, which we'll get into a lot more later can be dyed with different types, and additionally, if you want to decorate your shulker boxes, they can also have dye be applied to them. If you happen to come upon a sign, or maybe a hanging sign inside of Minecraft 1.20 that has a really important message on it, you could always illuminate that message with a certain type of dye, maybe one that makes it stand out the most, if you want to really decorate your world that way. And rumor has it, the text on these signs often tells you very important things. You can also dye glass blocks. By simply having 8 glass blocks and 1 piece of dye, then you can turn that into stained glass. The same thing can also be done if you have the glass panes. And also, another dyeable building block, you can dye terracotta if it is the standard terracotta type. You can use dyes inside of the loom in combination with banners to add different patterns to them. Certain mobs can have dye applied to them. We can right click on the sheep with different colors, and it will change to that color, and then when it's sheared, that color is the color of wool that we'll get. And the other mobs you can do this with are of course pets, so for instance here we could dye the color of our cat there purple, and the color of our dog here orange, or green, or black, or whatever color we want our dog to have. Also, if you're inside of Bedrock Edition, you can actually make dyed water. Now this is a very strange exclusive feature, and it's only able to be done inside of cauldrons, but more or less what happens is you right click on the cauldron with a piece of dye if the cauldron has water in it, and then the color of that water in the cauldron will turn to be whatever color the dye was that you used on the cauldron. And this is useful for dyeing different leather items. Now let's start with red dye. There's a couple different ways that you can get this item. The first way is with poppies. Of course also the poppy item can generate very very frequently. Now, the rose bush is really great because it does not just give you one piece of dye, it actually gives you two. And of course what makes the rose bush especially useful is the fact that if you right click on it with the bone meal item, then it'll duplicate that rose bush or sort of grow more of it really. However the red tulip can of course also be turned into red dye. Well each piece of beet root can be directly converted into one piece of red dye, basically just like the poppies, let's say, or the red tulips. Let's go from red dye onto yellow dye. So the first source of yellow dye is the dandelion, and those are directly crafted one to one into yellow dye, one dandelion into one. But also there is one other item that allows you to get yellow dye, and that one is a little bit more rare, it is the sunflower. It works almost the same to a rose bush because it is a too tall flower, where one of the sunflower items gives you two yellow dye, and those are actually the only ways you can get yellow dye inside of Minecraft. But onto what's between yellow and red dye, that is orange dye. There is a flower that directly gives you orange dye, and that is the orange tulip. And just like every other one tall flower, one of these orange tulips will directly turn into one orange dye. And if you put one red and one yellow dye inside of the crafting grid, that will give you two orange dye. So it's a direct conversion where you can without loss mix the yellow and the red dye into orange dye. How do you get green dye? This dye, in some sense, is the most difficult to get, as it only comes from a singular source. So more or less, if you want to have green dye inside of Minecraft, you have to harvest cactus. Then you want to smelt these cactus, and one cactus will eventually smelt into one green dye. As an interesting fun fact, green dye used to be called cactus green, just to sort of refer to the fact that it was only able to be found if you smelted the cactus item. And as that's the only method to get it, we're going to go on to a different type of dye, which is white dye. You cannot get white dye from this white flower, this white flower, or even the white tulip. No, the only white flower that you can get white dye from is the lily of the valley. This is not the most common method of getting white dye, actually it's to get it from bones. But it's not the actual bone item that we're using, it is bone meal. In bedrock, although the white dye item does exist, bone meal can do every single thing that white dye can do. But if you're in Java or want to just make white dye normally, 
Put the bone meal inside of your crafting grid and one bone meal turns into one white dye. Lime dye, also known as lime green or light green dye, is the next item that I'm going to show you how to craft. There are two ways of getting this dye inside of the game. So if you have one green dye and one white dye in the crafting grid, that will give you two lime dye. A really fun alternative way of getting the lime green dye is to smelt sea pickles. That's right, sea pickles inside of Minecraft can be smelted into lime dye. Very similar to the cactus, the sea pickles getting directly cooked has one sea pickle turn into one lime dye. But if we go on from green dyes to the blue ones, how do we get them inside of Minecraft? The first way is by simply mining lapis lazuli ore and getting the lapis item, but you can also craft blue dye out of it in java still, and you can craft blue dye of it in bedrock too, although you don't need to. There are two other main methods of getting blue dye inside of Minecraft. First one is to just buy lapis from the cleric. There is a really common flower though that generates also in many biomes across Minecraft that can be directly turned into blue dye, and that is the corn flower item. Now here's one item that literally only has one way of getting it, and that is cyan dye. Cyan dye is a fairly popular dye for things like, let's say, cyan terracotta, or maybe other cyan building blocks, and the only way to get it is to have blue dye and green dye inside of your crafting grid, where two of those turn into two cyan dye, a direct conversion recipe, as every single dye recipe is. So if you want a really big source of cyan dye inside of Minecraft, be sure to have a good cactus farm, and also a good way of mining lots of lapis. For whatever reason, there's almost always a blue and light blue item when most things have coloring options, and Minecraft is no different. So if you want to have light blue inside of Minecraft, then all you have to do is make yourself some blue dye, and also to make yourself some white dye whatever way you want to. And then once you have both of those, simply put the white dye and the blue dye in the crafting grid, so then you have light blue dye. The blue orchid's appearance definitely makes it make sense that it would turn into light blue dye, and it does directly one blue orchid into one light blue dye. Let's move on from blue though and now go to purple dye. Purple flowers are incredibly common inside of real life, so it's surprising that Minecraft doesn't actually have any purple flowers. However, there is still a way of getting purple dye inside of Minecraft, although there is only one recipe for it, and that of course has red dye as well as blue dye in the recipe, and put both of them inside the crafting grid. One red dye, one blue dye turns into two purple dye, and so it is definitely very simple to get this purple dye item. Pink dye, made several different ways, the first one involving what you'd guess, the pink tulip, and it turns directly into pink dye. The color of pink for dye though is made incredibly easy by having the peony, and one peony turns into two pink dye directly, but as the final method for getting pink dye, you just need to get white dye as well as red dye, and as it would of course make sense, having white dye and also red dye inside of the crafting grid, two of those give you two pink dye. What about a sort of variant of pink, magenta? How do you get that dye color? So the first method of getting magenta is with the lilac, when lilac turns into two magenta dye. But we also have the allium, that can also be turned directly directly into magenta dye, but there are surprising three different crafting recipes that can be used to find the magenta dye item. The first one requires one blue, two red, and also one white. And putting all of those in separate slots inside of your crafting grid gives you four magenta dye. You can also, for whatever reason, have one pink dye and one purple dye inside of the crafting grid, and these two colors will directly mix into two magenta dye. Having red in the crafting grid, blue in the crafting grid and pink in the crafting grid and these three together will give you three magenta dye. Brown dye for me is usually the most difficult dye to get and that's because inside of Java there's literally only one place to get it and that is from cocoa beans which are only found in one biome that is the jungle. Of course when cocoa bean turns into one brown dye however inside of bedrock this is made somewhat easier because the wandering trader also has a trade in which they will sell you cocoa beans. We already talked about white dye earlier so that I could show you how to craft the light versions of the blue and the green. So how do you get black dye? 
Black dye used to only come from one source, but now there's two sources of it. The first one is ink sacs from squids, when ink sac turns into one black dye. However, if you're feeling risky, there is one other method of getting it, and that is the deadly wither rose. The wither rose does not generate like this, in fact it only is dropped when a wither kills a mob. However, there are ways of farming wither roses, and more or less one wither rose turns into one black dye. Here's a very obvious one, if you mix white dye and black dye together, you get grey dye. And that is the only method of getting grey dye inside of Minecraft, but the same could definitely not be said for the light grey dye, which actually has five different ways of getting it, the same number of ways as the magenta dye. So the first ways of getting light grey dye are from the oxide daisy, when oxide daisy turns into one light grey dye, then the azure blue a turns into light grey dye, white tulips can be crafted into light grey dye, and finally there are two crafting recipes that can be used to get light grey dye. The first one is you can use two white dye and one black dye to give you three light grey dye. The second thing is you can craft grey dye, then have one grey dye and one white dye, that'll give you two light grey dye. So that is how you get every single colour of dye inside of Minecraft. Every single type of dye can be bought from the wandering trader as a chance, it's always one emerald for three dye of whatever type. Also in terms of farming flowers inside of bedrock, it is way easier because of two different features. The first one is that if you break a tall flower with the fortune enchantment inside of bedrock edition, as what's likely a bug, it will duplicate that flower, meaning that you can go from literally one tall flower to hundreds of them, maybe even thousands, in only a couple minutes if you simply break them, place them down, break them, and place them down again. The second one is if you directly bone meal a specific flower inside of Bedrock Edition, more flowers of that type will generate around it. Alright, and that's everything about dyes, on to fireworks. Now fireworks are an incredibly fun item inside of Minecraft, and there are so many different things you can do with them. Now there is an insane number of different variables that you can have when creating fireworks, from the firework size to how many firework stars there are, to the dye colors, to the fade, to the effect, to the duration, and even more, means that as one Reddit user figured out, there are probably about 231 septenvigantillion different types of unique fireworks. That's anywhere between 200,000 to 2 million times more atoms than there are in the entire known universe. So of course this makes fireworks the most custom part of the entire game. At the core of every firework is the firework star, and this is what actually contains the awesome patterns to it. If, for instance, you're wanting to make a firework without a star, that's simply one piece of gunpowder and one piece of paper, up to three pieces of gunpowder, and that'll give you what's like an elytra firework. Though a firework star requires one piece of gunpowder and at least one color of dye. If you do more than one color, it'll be a mixed effect. So let's say we're going to make a firework star star that's just red, and let's compare that to a firework star that's red but also has some green in it. Now the red one when it explodes simply has the red color there, but the green one when it explodes has no more particles, it's just that 50% of the particles are red, 50% are green. What you can also do though is let's say we want to have a red firework star but we want it to not just stay as red, after the red is done we want it to fade to another color. Well then we can put a different color in with the firework star once it's crafted, and that'll add to red, then fade to pink. But over here, because we have that original pink there, we still see that red slowly turn into pink before it disappears. So that's how you add dyes to fireworks. We can change the shape of them. There are five different shapes of fireworks. There is the standard shape, there is the large ball shape, there is the star shape, there is the creeper skull shape, and there is the burst shape. And you can sort of see what those all look like there, that's the burst, sort of a random amount of particles going around. This one right here is the creeper face, which is definitely that. This one is the star effect, that is the small ball firework. And this is the large ball firework. These are made by putting an additional item, so a fire charge gives you the large ball, a singular gold nugget gives you the star shape, 
a creeper skull, but actually not just a creeper skull, in fact any mob head in the entire game will give you the creeper skull shape. Then if you want the burst shape, that is the feather, and of course if you just want the small ball shape, that is adding no additional item. Also at this stage of the crafting process, we can also, if we still have room in our 9 slot grid, add an effect item. So adding a diamond will give it the trail effect, and also if we want we can add glowstone dust to the firework additionally or not additionally, so for instance you could have trail and twinkle as twinkle is the glowstone dust effect. Now we'll try one with both of them and then just one or the other. So this one right here has trail and we can see there's this amazing looking particle trail from the firework. Then we have the twinkle effect and we'll make these go off in the twinkle. The fireworks will actually have this additional noise and finally we can definitely have both but now we still have two more whole levels of customizability and we can have not one but actually multiple firework stars inside of one firework rocket. Although this is incredibly additionally expensive if you want a really great looking firework you can definitely do this and I'll show you why you might want to. Let's craft this and take a look at what the effect is versus let's just say having the dies inside of one of the fire firework stars. That's when we sort of see all those different firework stars individually. So for instance it starts with one color and kind of goes through all the different colors. And the final point of customizability is the flight duration. Now no matter what type of firework star you have, flight duration is something important to consider as it can be one, two, or three. And this means how far up does the firework go before it explodes. And they do have to be separated in the crafting grid like this, which makes it impossible to have more than five firework stars inside of your crafting recipe if you have flight duration 3. I'll let this firework go off and you'll see it goes incredibly far up into the air before it eventually explodes way way up there. So now we're going to take all the skills we learned and combine them to make one ultimate firework. We're going to start by placing a stack of glowstone dust, fire charges, and diamonds inside of the crafting grid along with gunpowder. Then we're going to make a red firework star, an orange firework star, and just sort of go through all the different fireworks like this. All right, now we have all those. Then we're gonna have these fade to the color beneath them. So now we have these six really complicated firework stars. For the actual rocket itself, we're gonna put one paper and two gunpowder. We would do flight duration three if we could, but we simply can't. And the orders that these show up in when the firework launches are the order that we put them in. So we're gonna go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, so it goes through all the colors like that. Now this gives us this incredibly complicated firework, and now it's become midnight, which is the perfect time of night to see a firework be shot off. And let's shoot this firework, stand back, and see what we've created. We have this amazingly beautiful firework that goes through all the colors of the rainbow, then sort of fades out into alternative colors and goes away. Now if you're having a little bit of trouble crafting fireworks inside of Minecraft, no worries, because the website, minecraft.tools, has an amazing page that shows you how to craft them. You can pick all of your primary colors, then the secondary alternative colors, the explosion shape, the effects, and the shooting power, and it'll validate them and tell you if it works. It will tell you all the different steps of crafting that firework star to get your desired result. Now, although of course you know how to craft fireworks, there's a couple different ways of launching them. So the first one is right clicking on the ground and the firework will go off of that block into the air and explode once its flight duration has ended. The second one is from a dispenser. A dispenser of course with fireworks in it will launch those fireworks but in the direction that they're facing. And this does work in every direction even downwards if we want to have a firework go down. Or just something normal like going upwards north, south, east, or west, whatever direction you want, you can have this firework launcher make them go that way. They can also be shot in a crossbow, and if it has multi-shot, you can basically duplicate your one firework into three, as it only costs one firework to load, but it shoots three fireworks, which is great if you're trying to make a bit more of a budget fireworks show for your world. And of course you can also use them if you're flying with elytra just be warned the game does not protect you from that firework explosion if there is a star there as it'll actually explode as you're flying and if you're not careful you can fly with these and unfortunately be exploded by all of those fireworks anyway that's the end of this firework and rockets guide if you enjoyed like the video i'll see you in the next one and have a great day goodbye